like kids? Come watch my review of it. You'll love it. I promise. If you do, I'll give you this balloon. Oh, oh. Look at this pretty balloon. Look at the, the way it floats. And you can float too. You'll all float. You'll all Critic guy, and I'm here today to review the film It. So it takes place in the town of Derry, which is currently facing a missing children crisis. It follows a group of kids known simply as the Losers Club as they stumble upon who is responsible for kidnapping all of these kids, and that would be this creepy and mysterious clown known as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. <laughs> And from here, the kids team up to figure out who exactly this Pennywise character is, what exactly is he doing, and how can they stop him. Okay, let's just get this out of the way right off the bat. The original It fucking sucked. It's a dated piece of shit that is more over the top and cheesy than it was terrifying and horrifying. The only good thing about the original It was Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise, and even that was kind of stretching it as it was more cartoony and silly than it was terrifying or horrifying, but you cannot deny how memorable that performance was. So when I heard that they were remaking it, I had no problem with that. In fact, I was fully on board with the idea. I went into the film with some so-so expectations. I was looking forward to it, but I was also very hesitant because the guy that they casted to play Pennywise, Bill Skarsgård, I really haven't seen him in anything else, and I didn't really know how I would feel about somebody else playing Pennywise because Tim Curry was so memorable in the role. So yeah, I was a bit hesitant with that. Not to mention that they got the writer of Annabelle to write the script, and they got Andre Muschietti, I don't know how to say his name, the director of Mama. He's only directed one film. So I was like, okay, they don't really have the best creative team to bring it to the big screen. But they did have Kerry Fukunaga's script, the original script that he made for this film. So it had promise to it. There was somebody that was competent in the making of this film. So yeah, I went into the film with social expectations, not really expecting much. And when I came out, I was thoroughly surprised. I actually really enjoyed this film. Is it the best film of the year? No. This film definitely has its problems. But overall, it is a solidly made horror film that I can honestly say I liked. Hands down, the best thing about this film was Bill Skarsgård's performance as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Holy shit! This guy fucking nailed it! And he had so much to live up to. Like, I felt like if anyone had the pressure put on them, it was him because he had to live up to the iconic performance given by Tim Curry. And in my honest opinion, not only did he live up to that expectation, but he completely surpasses it and blows Tim Curry's performance out the fucking water. Because the original performance done by Tim Curry, the original Pennywise, he was terrifying in some parts, but most of the time he was just over the top and silly and I, did, I couldn't take him seriously. Like he just seemed too pleasant. Whereas this Pennywise is freaking terrifying. I would never want to see this guy anywhere. It doesn't matter. Daytime, nighttime, in my living room, out in the streets, this guy scares the shit out of me. I, I terrifying. And again, Bill Skarsgård just kills it with this performance. He really stands out and he makes, he makes the character his own. I dare say, Warner Brothers, you made this film. If you're looking for a good Joker, you found him. He's right here. Let, let's kick Jared Leto out. Let's put this guy in because it, this this is the Joker. This is the guy that we need to play the Joker. Like, he is just 
terrifying. And one thing I loved about him too, and that I was kind of scared at first, is that he does emulate the original Pennywise from both the books and the miniseries. Because the whole thing about Pennywise is he fucks with these children. He fucks with them on a mental level. He traumatizes them. And at first he didn't really traumatize them. He felt like a very stoic cliche, I'm the scary bad guy, I'm gonna come and kill you. But later on, as the film goes on, he just messes with these kids' minds and terrifies them as well. So I love that they were, they were able to perfectly capture the character of Pennywise. Like, <laughs> bravo. That's the best part of this film. Pennywise the character and the performance done by Bill Skarsgård. I, I can't praise it enough. And going off of Pennywise, every single scene that either focused on or featured him one of the best scenes in the entire film. In fact, my favorite scene, or my favorite segment of the film, is when the kids decide to go to this abandoned, decrepit house to find out whether or not the whale was still in there. That was the turning point of the film that made me say, wow, this film is actually pretty damn fun. And it was terrifying, it was thrilling, I was on the edge of my seat, the visuals were on point, the scares were excellent. That is honestly the strongest scene in the entire film, and that's when Pennywise is in full force. I loved that scene. The second half of this film is better than the first half. The first half really drags, and it's boring, and uh, I'll get into that a little later, but the second half really picks up the pace. It has the most intense moments. They're finally getting to the point and having Pennywise show up more often, and there were actually some good character moments among the characters. Then the climax was so well done. Again, just like that decrepit old house scene, it was thrilling, intense, engaging, cathartic. I mean, it was exactly what I wanted to see in this film. The climax of the film kind of rectifies and fixes one of the biggest issues a lot of people had with it, the novel. The way that it ends is not good. It's, it's kind of this big reveal where you're like, really? That's the fucking ending? But this ending is far superior than the original source material. I I'm saying that right now. It's far superior. As for the other characters, they were really hit or miss for me. Some I really enjoyed, while others... <sighs> we'll get to them soon. The main kid, Billy, I liked him to a certain degree. He truly shines though in the second half of the film where he finally comes full circle, nuts up, and becomes the strong, determined leader of the Losers Club. I really liked seeing that growth in his character, and he has the best and most convincing character arc in the entire film. In fact, the film is chock full of pretty solid character arcs. Not the best, but really well done. In fact, some of my favorite character arcs in the film come from characters I enjoyed the most. Like you have Bev's character arc, which was really well handled, and I did like her character, but much like Billy, she was very hit or miss, especially when it comes to the acting. Oh, I gotta get to that soon. And then there's the kid from Stranger Things who plays a vastly different character than the one that he plays in the TV series. In the TV series, he plays a very shy, timid, awkward kind of kid. Here, he's loud, he's abrasive, he cusses a lot, he makes fun of his friends, and he is the comic relief of the film, and he does a pretty good job. Sometimes his jokes did come off a bit forced, like, okay, kid, you're, you're, now you're just trying too hard. You need to calm down. But other times, he got some genuine laughs for me. I liked his character, and he also had a pretty interesting character arc, too. I won't say it's one of the best but it was okay. And finally, and this really should go without saying, there were some really good scares and visuals in this film. One of my favorites is where the kids are looking through a slideshow. You see it in the trailer where the slideshow just keeps on flipping, 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 and you see like the hair moving and then it's Pennywise. There's an extra part to that scene that I didn't see coming and it legitimately scared the shit out of me. It was so well done. The, the scares in this film were well executed. I was scared that they would resort to many cheap jump scares, and they do resort to a couple of them here and there, but the atmosphere was bleak, it was terrifying, and Jesus, Pennywise, like whenever you see Pennywise, he's unnerving. But unfortunately, I did have quite a few problems with it. And the biggest problem with it was the acting Sans Bill Skarsgård's. I, 
I, I mean, uh, wow. If there was one thing, one freaking thing that I thought this film would not copy from the original miniseries, it was the bad acting. But they freaking emulated that shit to a T. Most of these performances are so weak and unconvincing, especially when it came to the adults. I bet you thought I was going to say the kids. And yes, the kids' performances weren't that great either, but my major problem with the kids' performances is that they were so inconsistent. Like, sometimes they would give some decent performances, especially the kid who played Billy. Whenever he would be monologuing or give, like, a speech or he would have an emotional moment, I'm like, okay, that was actually kind of convincing. Let's hopefully keep that going for the rest of the film. But no, 15 seconds after doing all those things, he would resort back to the shitty performance he's been doing for most of the film. And I go, no, what, what happened? You were doing so well. The same goes for Beverly. Sometimes she was pretty good. She had some good moments. But other times I'm just cringing at how terrible the actress was being, especially when she would have these dialogue scenes with other characters. I'm like, it's not convincing. It just feels really awkward and forced. And none of the actors have chemistry. I'm sorry. I did not feel like these characters truly connected, truly bond. Which is a damn shame because Beverly and Bill kind of had an interesting romance going. And I could have bought it if the performances were a little bit better. The other kids? <laughs> oh my god. There's this one kid who's a Jewish kid. Wow. Freaking wow. How did this kid even get the role? Like, he's so terrible that he bogs down everyone else's performance around him. He's so unconvincing. He is so atrocious. Is this kid, was this kid an actor or was he one of the producer's kids? And he's just like, hey, no, put him in this film. I want him to be in this film. And then the black kid. He might be the second worst performance in this film. There wasn't a single moment where I felt like he was convincing. Like, yeah. I buy your delivery. There was this whole scene where he's giving like this whole monologue explaining his tragic backstory and I'm sitting there like, my god, you are definitely not selling this scene. Wow. Can we get this kid off the screen right now? The bullies. Oh my freaking lord. The bullies in this film. They were so cringy. Cliché. Over the top and hammy. Poorly written and terribly acted. It was laughable how bad their performance was. Did they give these kids any sort of direction when it came to their performances? Or did they just like make them stand in front of a camera and said, act, do what you think bullies usually do. And then they did the most cliche thing that came on their mind. Now, I know many of you are going to say that in the original novel, as well as the miniseries, that's exactly how the bullies are portrayed. They're supposed to be one dimensional and poorly written. But just because the original source material made those characters that way does not mean that you yourself have to also make them as derivative and one note and cliche. Now that they attempted to make the main bully, Henry Bowers, a much more sympathetic character as he is picked on by his father, but it's way too late to gain any sort of sympathy with this character, especially considering his behavior throughout the film. Even before we get that scene where we see him being picked on by his father, the shit that he does, like he literally carves an H on one of the kid's stomachs and I'm like, really? This kid is just going far beyond the realms of being a casual bully and being a psychopath. Now, I've mentioned a bunch of times in this review that the second half of the film is far superior than the first, which I found incredibly weak. And the reason I felt that way was because the first half of the film was so derivative, chock full of so many 80s cliches, it was daunting, slow-paced, and worst of all, BORING! I understand the reason it was so slow is that they were trying to build the characters, but the problem is that they didn't really write much for these characters. If they actually had something interesting to do with these characters, and actually developed them to the point that we were interested in them, then maybe I wouldn't have such a problem with the first half. But the way that they execute the first half of this film, 
It's the weakest writing in the entire film. And lastly, I didn't really care much for the romance building between Billy and Beverly. I just didn't really feel like there was a spark between them. Maybe it could be the way that they wrote the characters, maybe it's the performances, but it never registered with me. And I really didn't give a shit about the forced love triangle that they put into this film between those two characters and the fat kid. Honestly, they could have took the fat kid out of the equation and just focus on building a relationship between Billy and Beverly and maybe it might have worked. I don't know because again the performances is it's not that good. You could write the best romance dialogue in the world but if you don't have the actors who can perfectly portray it and bring it to life it's not gonna register and this one clearly did not register. Overall despite its numerous and I mean numerous flaws I was still really into it. It was a fun, entertaining, exciting, and thrilling horror film with a ton of great scares and an excellent performance by Bill Skarsgård. He carries this film, he makes it worth the price of admission, and he makes it quite an enjoyable film. I would recommend seeing it just for his performance alone. But as always guys, I'm not the end all be all opinion when it comes to IT. I would love to know what you guys thought of IT. Did you really enjoy it? Is it one of your favorite films of the year? Is it one of the best adaptations of a Stephen King novel you've ever seen? Was it truly scary to you? Or was it probably boring, dull, conventional, you didn't really get scared by it, and you think it's one of the weakest adaptations of a Stephen King novel, and it didn't capture the spirit of the original novel? And do let me know, what is your favorite adaptation of a Stephen King novel? Comment below, let me know, and stay tuned, I got an anime review that's probably coming out tomorrow and this Sunday. September 10th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be hosting live on this channel the BCG Rumble live Q&A featuring myself, Ben Tuttle, the artist, and the voices of the characters from BCG Rumble. I'm super excited because we're all going to be together at last in one video and we're going to be answering your questions and doing a live show. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss out on that. And hopefully I'll have some more movie reviews coming later on down the road. But until then guys, if you'd like to see more videos of this channel, be a part of the Black Critic Group, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video, really enjoyed it. And I'm talking about a second, the creepy clown known as the Black Critic Guy. <laughs> Peace YouTube!